Hello to my wonderful creative collective. It is April 1st. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's my April dance. Uh, super cheesy and ridiculous, but we're doing it. Uh, so this is April 1st. Happy Friday. This is fantastic. I'm very excited. Uh, new month, new moon, new you, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> new moon, who dis, right? Oh, this is so horrible. Anyways, <laughs> um, this is a very exciting day. I hope that you are using this moon energy well and using it in service to bringing things out into the world, even if it's just stepping into your power more, right? Even if it's just these little decisions that we make and little things that we decide to do that help us be the mo the fullest version of ourselves. That's so important, right? It's very important. And I'm really thrilled uh, that this energy is here. It, the Aries energy is very invigorating in general. I mean, I have a bit of air and fire in my chart, so um, it's more like party time when that happens. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, so uh, the what just went through my head was P-A-R-T-Y because I gotta, and that's from the mask. Uh, oh my God. Um, my friend and I uh, would watch movies like Liar Liar and The Mask and quote it to each other. So we didn't really watch the movie. We just did the most ridiculous impressions of the movie. And anyways, it was uh, it's great. We even uh, do that on the phone from time to time or leave voicemails with just movie lines and that's it. Um, <laughs> so uh, for some reason, like it just this it, this energy and she's an Aries. So that's why they kind of there's the, the thought process that went like this. Um, this energy to me is really great for uh, bringing a little bit more lightness to things. So I hope that you're using this energy and integrating it in a way that serves you. And if you're not, that's okay, right? This can be an opportunity to learn about it. Um, I Because this is just the daily readings and they tend to be a bit longer because I want to give you as much content as I can. Um, they are definitely, um, I need to be mindful of how much I say and what I say and all of that in service to time, which you can't see. But if I point right there, it's right there. Um, it, for you, it'll be down here somewhere <laughs> down there. Uh, but moving forward. So let's get into this reading today, your ascension, your hero's ascension journey. So I would like to invite the angels, my guardian angels, my spirit guides, protectors, teachers, and their healing energy to this space. And I ask that it is a safe space that allows for the fullest expression of our light, humanity, ascension, and healing. Oh, so good. So good. Okay, so I'm going to pull from the Hero's Journey Dream Oracle in service to your Hero's Journey Ascension Journey today. Hero's Journey Ascension Journey. Hero's Ascension Journey today. I used to find the word ascension so strange. Um, and this is, I, I, I found it strange at first because I thought of it in terms of like, you know, progress isn't linear. It's not all an upward trajectory. So the idea of ascension kind of bugged me because I, I was like, well, that's a sum that makes assumptions. And it struck me as prescriptive. Um, but I think the beauty in it is just really understanding that it's, it's just a word to describe a process. So um, it took some charge out of it for me. I don't know why I'm telling that story. Maybe there's someone that needs to hear that. I don't know. So your hero's ascension journey. Um, it's also good to be reminded of the power of words to elevate or reduce. So uh, your hero's ascension journey, though. So spirit, can you please give me some oracle cards for this journey for my wonderful creative collective for April 1st? The quest, plunge boldly into life. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful energy. That's fantastic energy. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Whoa. <clears throat> this keeps trying to flip out here. For this you were born. Foster your intention for incarnating in this dimension. Foster your intention for incarnating, incarnating in this dimension. Well, that's just beautiful. For this you were born. Were you born for your quest, my loves? <laughs> so let's see here. Be the bridge. Expand your consciousness to behold both worlds. I'm good with that energy. That's great energy, actually. And I'm going to use the Lightseer's Tarot to clarify. Do I want to use the Lightseer's Tarot, Spirit? What do you want? What do you want? Um, yes. Okay. <sighs> I was trying to think of the, anyways, that's fine. Oh, spirit, can you please clarify? Thank you so much. Can you please clarify 
these messages for April 2022. Please and thank you for my creative collective. April 2022. Good Lord. I was thinking about, I was I was asking Spirit, do I use the Light Sears Tarot? Whoops. Or do I'm having some issues with this deck. Or the Muse Tarot. So I was trying to decide which one do I use. And Spirit was, I, I thought about it because I used the, the Muse Tarot for my April 2022 readings. Um, so that was the predominant thing. And uh, yeah. Anyway. So Light Sears Tarot by Chris Ann. Spirit, can you please give me my ascension journey for today for messages for those watching for April 1st, uh, 2022. That's why April 20, April 1st, 2022. Good Lord. The joys, I've said this before on other videos, but it's like the joys of having a learning disability with numbers, right? Like I, I poke at it because I, it's, I try to take it as lightheartedly as possible because it doesn't take away from anything for me to talk about. There's no charge to it. Sometimes it's just funny. Nine of pentacles is where you're starting. Oof, this is great. It's feeling fulfilled, confident, like you're ready to take on anything. You're, the world is your oyster. That's more seven of cups energy to me, but... 10 of pentacles. Yes. That's awesome. That's the call from the universe. This is, so it's almost like you're being invited into a deeper sense of fulfillment, a deepening of commitment, uh, a deepening of your, I guess, a deepening of your understanding of what you value and what is most important to you. Uh, this could be people investing you. That's It's just this sense of going deeper. Yeah. Seven of cups. What? <laughs> um, I may be on testosterone, but I can still hit that falsetto. <laughs> So here we go. Oh my gosh. Nine of cups. This is great progression energy here. The sun. Oh, this new moon. I'm really, I'm feeling that this new moon is like, is really powerful for, for my collective today. High priestess. Yep. Hanged man. Wow. Major arcanas. So these came out together, Lovers and Nine of Swords. Major Arcana, but you're a little bit stressed about it. <laughs> the Wheel, wow, wow. And King of Wands. <whistles> okay, so, <laughs> um, so this deck, there's a ton of cards in here still. For this many Major Arcanas to come out is like, that's a big deal. Um, so whew, what I'm seeing here, I feel like spirits just like gave me this motivational talk energetically. Um, what I'm seeing here for you is that you're being called to a deeper sense of commitment. You're being sorry about the yawn there. Oof, that's not great. Um, sometimes the, it's just like you need to pull in that oxygen and it's like a form of energetic release. And that's really like, that's a bit of what's happening here. Uh, why I just yawned. I think that there's like this sense of like tired satisfaction. I, I envision somebody at a cottage and like, and I've gone to friends' cottages where I've experienced this. I do not have one of my own. Uh, part of me wants to be like, yet. <laughs> I would love that. Uh, but this here is really about that sense of satisfaction. Like you've been at the cottage all day. You've been swimming in the lake. Uh, you've been, you know, at the beach, you've been reading, you've been engaging with people, you've been to a campfire at night, you've just had this whole day where you're out, you're playing one games and things like that with people, you're playing cards, you're just socializing, it's a good time. And then at the end of the day, you're like, oh, everything that I had went into this day, and yet my cup is still full. And I feel like that's where this energy is here, you're seeing what you're really valuing. Um, so the nine of pentacles, and then it goes into the 10 of pentacles. So this is sort of the invitation from the universe, right? It could also be an invitation to uh, family, community, that kind of thing. Um, you know, this is you on your own doing just fine. And then 10 of pentacles shows up as the invitation. Like you're being invited. Perhaps this is um, like a sort of page energy in a more mature form or in a more invested form, committed form. Um, not that the pages aren't invested or committed. It's just, I'm getting pages are messengers, right? So it's almost like it's an invitation to see the value of what's ahead. And you're really choosing, you're deciding, right? This is the teacher for you in this spread here. The guide, the mentor, the teacher is, is really, um, 
the teacher for you is understanding how to discern what you want that will be emotionally fulfilling. Seven of Cups, right? Um, the reason why I say that is the minor inconvenience is Nine of Cups. Like the minor inconvenience on the journey is like your happiness. Oh, no big deal. Just total wish fulfillment. That's really inconvenient. <laughs> like that's the energy that I'm getting here. And I think that it's sort of the, the minor inconvenience is probably just that um, you're not used to having choices, I'm getting. You're not used to having choices. And choices doesn't mean options in terms of people and third parties and, and all of that stuff. Um, I, because I, I've, ugh, that energy is so dense. I'm not even going to go there. Um, with this Seven of Cups and Nine of Cups, though, uh, what I see here is that, you know, you're being called to invest and you're, you're trying to discern. This is, to me, more a discernment of what you really want uh, and what is, what would fulfill you the most right <clears throat> what would fulfill you the most and what would give you the most this is also meaning right especially because the the protagonist companion so this is you kind of at the start of your journey this is where you're assembling your resources together this is kind of where you're on the journey and things you meet along the way right the the kind of the thing that you weren't expecting so inconveniences turn towers if they're ignored is how i tend to read this position and i see this as being a um this is sort of like if you don't pay attention to what is really fulfilling to you to what really makes you happy um, it can really throw you off course, right? And this, if, if I were reading this intuitively, it's almost like this is showing up in reverse. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just leave it like that so that you can see it. So I'm a visual person. So in readings that I watch, I like to see the cards laid out as somebody's reading them. So um, I'll leave that reversed, even though once I leave it, like once I move on to the next part, I'll turn it back upright. Um, I'm almost getting that the this is the sort of protagonist companion on the journey. This is the protagonist uh energy that's joining you um and what i'm getting is that you need to focus more on what is going to give you meaning than not uh because because it's going to disconnect you from understanding what you need and want the most right like the more you do the more you do <laughs> um and and other obvious aphorisms from captain obvious on this side of things i will show you my cape <laughs> Um, what, what I'm trying to say here is just that the, the more that you reach for what means the most to you and the more that you discern what's most important to you and will bring you the most meaning, the more that you can really lean into it and it connects you to, the more that it connects you to, um, your intuition, the more that it connects you to your higher self and this higher sense of knowing that is going to guide you through the rest of your journey. And I think the reason why this is showing up is kind of the minor, the, the, the inconvenience that can become a tower if it's not really dealt with well. Uh, it's showing up here. This is kind of like the big struggle that you're dealing with is the hanged man. So it's suspended, right? Enlightenment that's slow and that's kind of suspended and taking a while. And I think that it could be because there's this sense of needing to really really understand what's going to satisfy you. And this isn't just like passionate satisfaction or fulfillment, right? This is like long term. This is the stuff that like once you're done, like once you're in a relationship with someone and you're past the point of, um, you know, like the sexual energy is charged, like that can still be good. But once you're past the point where that's like, you know, the thing, then what? Then what? Right? What happens? What happens after, you know, you're like, oh, um, you mean we both have bad breath in the morning oh you mean like oh like we're at the part of like bodily functions getting like it's stuff like that where it's like real life i sorry if, if that's if someone's like oh clutching their pearls and they're like that's rude it's real life right so it's almost like this sense of like disconnect like in the past you've needed to be disconnected from real life as it were, in order to feel satisfied and to understand something that you wanted to be part of. Like you weren't seeing the long game. You weren't seeing the big picture. But I think here, this is a call to understand what's most important to you and allowing you to access that. I think staying connected intuitively is part of what will remind you of what's most important to you. Not that like, if you find someone that can be your best friend, I think that's like the best kind of love, right? That's the kind of the best kind of love because you can make stupid jokes together. You can, you know, I talk in voices all the time. Like I try to Im imitate uh, characters in um, movies and TV shows, not in an appropriate way or a really inappropriate way, just like voices like Jim Carrey, like in the liar, liar thing. That's, I thought of that at the beginning of this. Um, just stuff like that. Like when you can find your best friend, 
um, and, and that, that becomes the basis of things. It's just so much easier. It's so much easier. And I, I don't know if this is a relationship oriented thing for somebody like this, this is a kind of journey that you're taking, no doubt. Um, but I'm almost wondering whether it's creative work or more relationship oriented. It could be all three, right? Like the way we do one thing one, in some, in one place is also the way we do some things in other places too. So I think that that can be kind of the carryover, right? Like the way that you might do things in work is also the way that you do things emotionally. And that shows up in things like the lovers and your relationships. Uh, I don't, uh, I'm going to ask if this is more choice related in a moment, but um, I think that staying connected to your intuition will remind you of what's most important to you. Um, and, and that will give you that fuel that, you know, that passion um, to keep moving forward. Like I read this too as passion, right? Um, but I think that the, the hanged man showing up in that position of like, you know, this, it, I think that being disconnected from yourself and your intuition and your joy is what's going to really keep you stuck. Even if like, this is also stuck energy, right? Like this is what you, um, so this position is kind of the big, the big climactic ordeal, right? The big ordeal, the tension, the battle internally, uh, or externally. And then this is kind of like the fortune that you find after the difficulty that you experienced. And it's the nine of swords that was clarified by the lovers. So I think that there are choices that you're going to have to make. And I think that there can be passion. Um, there can be passion. There can be love. Um, there's this like duality, but I'm really getting here from the lovers. I'm getting a sense of union um, energy. It could be like, it could be romantically related. Um, I look at the Merkaba between their foreheads and that's really beautiful. But I think that this is kind of giving you access to a specific energy um, that you, you've you been wanting and you've been needing. Um, and it's almost like this is you showing up financially, you know, in, in your zone. Um, and then as you go through, it's this like journey to emotional fulfillment, which is really beautiful, right? Like nine of pentacles, 10 of pentacles, seven of cups, nine of cups, the sun, high priestess, hanged man, lovers, huge, huge things that you're learning. Um, and it could be today or this week. This is not specific just to the day of, it can be spilling over into other times too. But like, this tells me that there are big things that you're integrating and that you're learning or that you're being reminded of, or there are big ways that these are showing up in your life, right? Big ways that this stuff is showing up in your life. Um, and I see this showing up as well. So I, first and foremost, spirit, can you please clarify? I want some clarification on the high priestess here. The reason being is I want to understand. So let me do it like this. I want to understand this high priestess in reverse spirit. Can you please clarify? Um, can you please clarify some information uh, for me regarding this, um, how intuition can kind of show up in reverse, how intuition can show up in reverse for my creative collective today, April 1st. And this might be, <laughs> spirit's funny. I just heard the words April fools. Like, <laughs> okay. Um, it's almost like you're playing tricks on yourself. Maybe you're playing tricks on yourself. I, I just saw these two energies come out. Yeah. So this is really how you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to pull these as well. Why? Because I can. Um, so I'm getting some kind of stuck energy and it's also, so it's relating to other people, but I think that this is really you taking in too much information. It's almost like you can't it, you can't integrate it because there's too much information coming in. Now, this can be a reflection of the Seven of Cups. Yes, I know. Uh, but what I'm also getting from this is just this super duper stuck energy where you were feeling like you've got to hang on super tight to stuff because you can't let it flow. Um, and it, this includes information through you, right? Like you could be getting intuitive hits about something being really amazing for you. You could be getting intuitive hits about something being really amazing for you, but you're screwing with the manifestation of it with thought processes where you're like, well, I'm just going to keep putting in the work and you're not really seeing what's available, right? You're not really seeing what's available. Four of cups. I mentioned that, that there was four of cups energy here. And I think that that's related to this understanding what gives you meaning, right? What makes this work? What makes the eight of pentacles worth it? What makes the eight of pentacles worth it? Because that thing is what, that's what manifestation is all about, right? So I do think that you, I don't even, yeah. So I do think that you're getting messages about 
this, uh, you are kind of integrating this. This is kind of the, the vignette of the antagonist energy here. And what I'm really understanding is that this is just kind of the, the internal journey that you're on or that you have been on about what gives you the most meaning. For some people, that is relationship. For some people, that is love. For some people, that is having kids. For some people, that is, um, you know, that is volunteering for some people it varies for everybody right what gives what makes life rich so that when it gets hard and when you spend long days putting in the work you are able to um, integrate these really beautiful lessons these really beautiful lessons um, and you're also able to really connect with that meaning right this is also like look at this they're both like they're both it's almost like one energy feeding off of the other right meaning is fed by joy joy is fed by meaning right? Fun is fed by emotional fulfillment. Emotional fulfillment is fed by lightness, mirth, being able to laugh and joke about things, right? It's a, it's that lightness of being. And this too, this lightness of being, maybe that's going to be the title for today, lightness of being. Um, and then, so what I, the big picture that I see here, and there, and there is a big picture because of the number of major arcanas here, um, is that the, the battle within you has been really whether to let this go or to let this in, to let go or to let in, right? right? Not really sure about it. And I think that what you're understanding is that um, there's something really valuable about choosing to release and just to not to walk away from the nine of swords energy, to let go of that nine of swords energy. Um, you know, this is a Gemini card. Uh, and I, I'm wondering if this has something to do in, you know, there, this could be about manifesting. This could also be about the start of something new with, I think, the Gemini new moon coming up in May. Uh, I keep thinking it's May. Uh, but I think that this has something to do with that, where it could be drawing it in, where it could be giving you new understandings or experiences, things like that. And the reason why I say that is because the wheel is here in kind of the journey back home. So on the way back, you're like, nope, I'm, I'm complete and whole on my own. I know what gives me meaning. I know what I want. And it kind of allows you to walk through and end different cycles. It allows you to walk through and end um, different uh, th different patterns, things that you've kind of felt stuck in. So I think that this is definitely a big release. Like this is like a holy, like this is a definite TGIF. <laughs> like your 5D self is having one of those days, but um, in one of those good days, not one of the, one of those days. No. Um, I think that you're also being reminded that your intuition, your intuition here, uh, be the bridge be the bridge. Why? Because if you do this here, what I love is that there's such a similarity here. It's almost like this is like your higher consciousness informing you, right? Your higher consciousness informing you. Um, so be the bridge. Expand your consciousness to behold both worlds. So thinking about where you were and where you want to go, um, but then also integrating where you want to be, right? Be the bridge. You are the bridge. You're the bridge. And that's where this like plunge boldly into life. Like this is very connected energy, right? These energies are very similar. Plunge boldly into life. Very Leo and fifth house energy. It's an invitation. I feel like spirit and life are inviting you today and onward with this new moon. Um, this could be a month. This could be something that is happening this month and you'll see it more and more, right? <clears throat> where it's starting to come to the, come to fruition where, um, you're being asked not just to to redefine or recommit or commit to something that brings you joy, but commit to the process, commit to the process of uncovering what means the most to you and your why. What is it about things that you want that makes you want them? What is it about things that are important to you that makes them important to you, right? Like, what is that process? And I think that it's helping you to find meaning and that could draw in some elements of love it could draw in, can I get some, mm, I'm trying to think of how I can, uh, spirit, can you just clarify? Yes. Okay. So this is the psychic tarot for the heart. Um, spirit, can you please clarify if this is kind of a romantic journey or more career based? I know it might seem funny to ask you that. Thank you so much. Um, I just heard uh, we have grace for it all. So we have grace for it all. 
which is good. Um, rebuild. Dedicated effort. Okay, let me shuffle these. I'm getting too much information in. You know when someone walks into a store into the kids section, and when I say someone, this may have also included me in the past five years, and finds all the buttons on the kids' toys that make noise, uh, and decides to be the empathic, the nightmare empath, that, or the nightmare to empaths that they have so often experienced. No, I'm kidding. It, it's mostly when the store was empty, and I was in my late twenties when I did this. But it's like sometimes the information comes in, and it's like somebody walking into the kids section and finding all the noisy toys and pushing all of the buttons at the same time, like in a row, like do 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 do, and then leaving, and it's sounding like there's this creepy shit going down in stereo. Um, that's not creepy shit, but like that's sometimes what messages can feel like when they're coming in too fast. My cat is very adamant that she needs to be in the hallway. Strengthening bonds. So I don't get the impression that this, I mean, I think this is about relationships for sure. And the ways that finding meaning can impact them, um, without a doubt. Uh, this is the, um, I'm going to let her out, but I'm going to do this here. I know. She's very determined. She's very determined. Come here, chicken little. There you go. And then in two minutes, she's going to want back in. <clears throat> um, anyway. So um, we have the rebuild card. So this is the uh, tower. So... <laughs> I mean, the tower on the levers, but the way it's done here is rebuild. So I'm getting more, more kind of higher energy with this, like uh, angelic energy, angelic support with this uh, than not. And uh, we also have dedicated effort and strengthening bonds. So it could be that there's a reconnection happening um, for some people. It could just be a reconnection to what's most important to you. And that's sort of, this is like laying the groundwork for healthy relationship, right? This is sort of like laying the groundwork for what is going to make you the most happy and satisfied and fulfilled in a relationship. Why do I say that? Because you're coming out as the king of wands. And this could just be you in a very fiery season, in airy season, standing in your power and knowing exactly what you want, right? And in terms of the sun, this is a little bit more Leo energy too. Um, but I really see all of this coming together as like, these are, these are foundational. So the major arcana here tells me that this is foundational stuff that you're learning or sorting through, which, I mean, when you think about a hero's journey or ascension journey, there are journeys that you take that are much more everyday, like processes, things you experience in like annoying things that happen. But this is like foundational stuff that you're sorting through in your everyday. Um, and I think it's to your benefit that you let go of these things, uh, this, these thought processes, this kind of like feeling like you need to hang on. Um, you need to be stuck in order to have something to show for the journey. Oof, who am I channeling for that? You feeling like you need to be stuck. You don't need to be stuck. You really don't. Um, but again, you're letting, I see, I see that you're letting go of this and you're finding, um, you're finding that why, um, you're finding that why. And that's going to draw things to you in terms of not just stuff, but like experiences. Like I'm a more experienced person than I am a stuff person. Uh, but if you looked at my bookshelf, you would maybe not think that. <laughs> uh, but in terms of that, I think, you know, this is kind of that, that's a bit of this experience is understanding what's most important. And that while stuff is important, uh, it doesn't really compare to experiences and that what you're doing is drawing experience to you because um, experience is where you grow. That's where you get to experience. And if we're talking about relationship, that's experiences are where you get to make memories, right? Like that's where you get the the fun is. That's where all of the, the juice is in, in relationship, right? Like, so <clears throat> yeah, that's big lessons here for you. And so the wheel also is, uh, the wheel is the, uh, what planet? It is Jupiter. And that's also the expansion of kind of luck and integration. It's, um, it's a great planet. My uh, Jupiter is in Pisces. So during Pisces season, I was like, wee! <laughs> um, <clears throat> felt a little bit like a hot air balloon. Um, but I, I see it here, um, in the placement and in, in all of this, in the journey, in the place in the journey that you're meeting your Jupiter, like this for somebody, <clears throat> the place in the journey where you're meeting your Jupiter after having integrated your Neptune. 
and understood the dynamics of your Venus. Informed by the sun, you're accessing the king of wands in you. That's amazing. Yeah, the quest. Plunge boldly into life. I almost feel like that goes like right here. <laughs> like at the end, like I think this is where you're ending up. You know, this is the realization that you're coming to. This is the awareness that you now have. And it's a really beautiful one, right? Like for this, you were born. Foster your intention for incarnating in this dimension. And this isn't just about purpose or mission or that kind of thing. This is also about you really leaning into, um, into joy. Like what makes you excited to be here? What makes it exciting for you to be in the knowing and understanding that you are a spiritual being having a human experience? What is it that thrills you about that? Do more of that stuff. Do more of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at the dice here and I wanted someone to know. So this, what just came to mind was, uh, despite the heartbreaks and hurts, someone needs to know that they didn't roll the dice in the wrong way. They didn't roll the dice in the wrong way. Like that wasn't a bad judgment call. That wasn't a bad judgment call. Whoa. Okay. Um, and I, I, so I finished reading. So um, the Alchemical Book Club, it, the book that we uh, covered for that is The Power of Regret. And um, you'll see that, well, you will have seen it or had access to it. Um, and one of the things it talks about is just integrating these different lessons for regret. So that might be something to go back and watch. Um, and I'm just thinking you didn't roll the dice. Like we think about regret as like an either or proposition, right? But it's sort of regret is the integration of both the light and dark of something. Because what we're doing is taking a look at what happened and saying, not that it, we don't feel regret, not that something bad didn't happen, but we're sort of integrating the knowledge that what happened uh, can be either good or bad, depending on how we look at it, right? Depending on how we look at it, it can go either way. And that that's okay. That there's something really tremendously valuable in it for us, regardless. Um, and even in the shittiest of situations, right? Like I, in 2017, I broke up with someone who was a really, I mean, this was the beginning of 2017. We lived together uh, and it was not great. Um, super toxic relationship, very narcissistic. Um, you know, like the kind of thing where you're told that you're too fat for them. Like literally we're, you know, so I won't go into too many more details, but um, because that's like, it's not active right now in my vibration. But what I'm seeing here is just that it's like, it's a, it's the ending of a cycle. Like you, once you're through, you're just through. And, and I'm trying to think of how to word how this is coming through to me. <sighs> you can't, you don't regret that things happened because you're wiser for it, right? I can, I can easily look back at that time and be like, hey, that was so horrible that I moved in with this person and then I had to move out really like it was, it was like in a flash. And I remember um, the few months after that, it was just this journey of like trying to rediscover what the hell just happened, right? Like, it's almost like this, you're taken aback and your energy is like, whoa, like it almost has to reckon with itself in order to fully integrate it as not a regret. But then thinking about how, um, I don't know why regret is coming in here. Cause so many people say like, oh, I have no regrets, no regrets. Um, and that's an, that's a great way to live, but perhaps the idea should be more that paying attention to regret uh, is a wise choice because if you ignore it, what ends up happening is you lose access to meaning, right? That's one of the things that was in that book by Daniel Pink, The Power of Regret. One of the people interviewed said that regret is kind of an understanding. It's like feeling it is like that points you towards meaning in your life because the absence of meaning and the absence of meaningful things uh, and interactions and connections is what we end up regretting. So understanding how regret has manifested and how it has not um, is a more important thing than just saying, you know, screw it, no regrets. That's more fool energy. And that's that maybe it's just like, hell yeah, let's do this as opposed to no regrets. If I have regrets about something fantastic, because it means that I'm learning, it's an invitation to learn, right? Do I want to carry them with me and be like, oh man, I should no. <laughs> But it doesn't mean that you can't feel it, integrate it, and then let it go. And I think that's what this is a call to do, right? Feel the chance you took. You rolled the dice, right? Feel it. Integrate the lessons that regret has taught you um, because you didn't make the wrong judgment call. 
uh, and that there is more that you're manifesting um, and that it is coming from a place of understanding your why. And in some ways, I feel like the four of cups is like, well, it's like not fully understanding your why, right? When you don't understand your why, you can't see the things that are being offered to you because you have no idea what you're even looking at because um, you don't know what's most important to you. So whew, this is a good daily reading. Holy. Um, so this could all just be stuff that you're integrating and understanding and um, not integrating and understanding. I mean, also that, but it's allowing you to really it's all in service to and part of this investment in the ten of pentacles because this is like the call right this is this is spirit ringing you up this is you know spirit dialing your number energetically and and the journey that you're being asked to take right now so can i please get uh, this is the miracles now deck by gabby bernstein so spirit can i please get some messages for my wonderful creative collective for april 1st Thank you so much. My happiness can be measured by the level of my faith in love. Yippers. Yes, it can. My happiness can be measured by the level of my faith in love. I'm trying to read it backwards. is um, I think that this is also a call to have faith, right? Like to have faith, like this is your faith in love. This is weird because it's showing up as the wheel, but this is like your faith in love. This is your faith in you. This is your faith. And, and I think Saturn kind of gets a bad rap, right? Um, this is the wheel. So it's not Saturn, but I feel like this is Saturn energy. I don't know why Saturn and Jupiter, like if they, if they were coming together in this expansion from the things that you've learned and taken in. That's where 3636 was just on the time. That's where this is like, you're integrating all of this information. And I think that this is like faith in love. This is faith in um, the capacity for things, not just to be better, but for you to do better because you know better, right? That's what cycles ending means. That's what pattern shifting means. That's what transmutation and alchemy is. R, R. <laughs> oh my God. You sound like a freaking pirate. Arr. Anyway. Um... That sounded more like a uh, that sounded more like an empty stomach than a pirate, but we'll we'll go with it. Um, uh, so, spirit, can I get one more message? Uh, uh, miracles now, please, and thank you so much. The moment I begin to celebrate myself and focus on my success is the moment I begin living. Yep, this is you beginning, and what a beginning, right? King of Wands, Aries, New Moon. What a beginning. That's amazing energy. Woo! If I had a noisemaker, aside from my mouth, which is a very efficient noisemaker, um, I would, uh, I would, that would be like going down right now, like one of those little party favors. Um, oh, my creative collective. I got my party hat on for you. This is great. This is so big. Okay, Spirit, can I please get some notes? And this is the notes on uh, notes from the universe on love and connection deck by Mike Dooley. Can I please get some messages for my creative collective for April 1st? Whoa. Hey, -oh. <laughs> Saturn. Oh, my gosh. If they once loved you, they still do. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what do you mean you can't read it? If they loved you once, if they once loved you, they still do. Thanks for every single time you ever fell in love, whether or not it was obvious, whether or not it lasted and whether or not you were loved back, it changed everything. Actually, you're always loved back. Just had to put that in there because yeah, not Saturn, but it feels Saturn-y. Um, spirit, can I get one more, please? That was so good. Oh, I love when spirit does that. It's just like, <sighs> that's so awesome. Thank you so much, Spirit. So much gratitude for that one. Forgive. Oof, there's another one. In alignment. This is in alignment. Okay, let me put this back. This is really in alignment. Oh, my goodness. Of course, anger can always be justified, but then so can forgiveness. Just depends on how much more you want from the adventure. Go for gobs. The universe. Why do we do this? Look at the line. It's like this line of fire. You know what I'm going to do? I just see this as like, oh, look at that. Look at that. I mean, really? I think that this is you. This is like, it's not the King of Wands, but I feel like that's kind of how you're showing up at the end of this reading. King of Wands. How beautiful is that? 
but like look at this like that's how it popped into my head oh so good forgive and that's like the quest plunge boldly into life <sighs> my creative collective this was an amazing reading today very powerful and i freaking love it <laughs> So I love this for you and I hope that you love this for you because if you're in the middle of this, if you're somewhere like around here, you're like hanged man energy, a little bit of Neptune, Venus is here, but like this is like the higher octave of Venus, right? Neptune is the higher octave of Venus. So you're kind of suspended in this place of like, well, I'm you're being enlightened by the higher octave of Venus. So it is okay. Let yourself be enlightened. Forgive. Remember, if they once loved you, they still do. This isn't necessarily, I mean, this could be about a specific person um, that has specific Saturn placements. So that could be 10th or 11th house, depending on how you view them. Um, huh. I, I don't think I, this could be specific, but this is really more so that, you know, being grateful that it happened as opposed to anything else. And when we see things in people from the lens of not forgiving them and from non-compassion, what we end up doing is landing ourselves squarely into this place of stuck, right? It's like we can, we're moving forward, but we always bring these nine of swords with us. We always bring this mental confusion with us. And that's not to say that when we're healed, we're free of those things because sometimes they join us for a purpose to teach us something, right? But I think that this is you being open to that lesson, which is excellent because the major arcana tell me that this is a lesson that's coming. And then the tower, albeit in a lighter form, uh, the tower tells me that this is kind of coming ready or not, right? Like ready or not, lessons about love and forgiveness and compassion are here. <laughs> ready or not, <laughs> right? And again, Jupiter's a really beautiful planet to have in this mix here. So... Yes. With all of this being said, my wonderful daily creatives, I hope that this reading resonated. If it did, please feel free to like and subscribe. It helps me to grow this channel and to keep doing this. It also connects our energy so that what I can do is, and I've experienced this, where you pick up on the energy of the reader uh, and vice versa. Um, and, you know, I think it was Ramblin' Mike that started talking about, he calls it the wish button, which I love. Um, but uh, I think that what that energy does is it connects you to the read. Um, and it helps the, the, it, it basically, it doesn't just mean the reading resonates, but it means that readings resonate. So take for that and take from that what you will, but nonetheless, have a wonderful day and an excellent weekend. I will see you on this weekend's videos and throughout the week. Take care.